Welcome, welcome everyone. I can see we have a few people online already. If you're here, please say hello in the chat. I know there's still quite a few more to log in. Let us know where you're from. We would normally be doing this from our Melbourne studio, but of course we do have some restrictions in Melbourne at the moment. So the good thing is we are able to welcome some international guests and interstate. So we'd love to know where you're from. Please yell out and let us know where you're from. We also have a poll section. We'd like to know how you're feeling. Uh, we'd like to know what brings you here. So please jump in there when you do have a minute and fill that out. Once you press that, it will also give you the stats so you will know where everyone else is at. You just maybe give it a minute for a few more people to join in. All right, well, I think we'll get started. Uh, there will be a recording of this available. So for those of you missed out, you can, um, you can go back to that. So just first of all, I wanted to do um, an official welcome and we respectfully acknowledge the traditional owners of the land, the Boonwurrungun people and the people of the Kulin Nation and pay our respect to their elders past and present. So our agenda for today, we'll just cover um, a few words about Scott Form and our involvement in the Australian Timber Design Awards. We have three fantastic projects to cover, Hexbot Canopy, the Trust Building Sydney, Chatston Link. Um, just wanted to mention um, the Tony's presentation for trucks uh, for the trust building. Um, it will not be recorded if you are watching this in a replay. So for those watching live, um, we do have some exclusive information that you can only see here. We will have Tony's details, so you of course can contact him direct and he'll be more than happy to go through those details. We will have some time for questions and answers at the end. So please drop your questions in the questions tab. Um, it would be helpful as well if you let us know who's directed to so we can get to them in real time um, as much as we can. If not, we can always get to you after it's a little bit complicated and discuss in the forum. Um, now, if you do know Scott Form, hospitality is a very big part of who we are. So we would love to welcome you in studio. Unfortunately, it's a little bit harder when we are online, but we will um, give out a lovely hamper with a bottle of Moet and Chandon and a few tasty snacks. So we'll draw that out at the end from the people in the question tab. So the catch there, um, you do have to drop us a question and you have to stay on the line. Um, I will draw that out at the end. So keep your, um, make sure that you're listening and drop your name and let us know that you're here. Oops. Okay, so just a few words about Sculpform. We offer a range of highly customizable modular lining systems in timber and aluminium. So we've got three projects that are featured in, um, in the nomination in Australian Timber Design Awards. By the way, if you haven't voted, uh, please do do so straight away. We'll post a link for the votes in the chat. So People's Choice Awards are open now. Now, our main project is um, Scarform Design Studio in Melbourne CBD, where we hope to welcome you soon once we open. There's also America Library, uh, Architecture VDN, and Victoria Point Foyer at um, Atoma Architecture Design. That's a few words about us. Now, we'll move on to our first project. And I just want to say thank you very much to all of our speakers for coming in. We've got a really diverse range of projects covered. Um, you might even be wondering why we grouped them all together. They are so very different. They're very unique stories behind each and every one of them. And I think the answer is it is a testament to how popular and how diverse timber is as a building material. So I know that all of us are very much passionate about it. So our first project is the Hexbot Canopy, which is a collaboration be between researchers and students from the University of Carlslautern and the University of Sydney. Hopefully I got that close. 
Um, it is presenter live from Germany, so thank you very much for joining us, Christopher. I know it's very early morning. Um, Christopher holds a Doctor of Sciences from the Swiss Federal Institute of Technology and a professional diploma in architecture with distinction from London Metropolitan University. So his research on, of innovation to the structures designed for assembly and digital fabrication is widely published in scientific journals, books, conferences and exhibitions. And he received the Best Paper Award at the Advances um, in Architectural Geometry Conference 2014. So welcome. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. And uh, thanks for giving us the possibility to present our project. <laughs> Hello? Is, is yes, now we've, got, we've got you online. Excellent. So, um, yeah, should I go ahead and share my screen? Absolutely. We'll look forward to your presentation. <laughs> so, just got to start this and hope that it works. Wait a second. Screen to share. Everything okay? Can you see the first slide? Yes, we've got it there. Excellent. So yes, again, um, hello and uh, good morning from Germany. I, I have the pleasure to present our collaboration project, Hexbox Canopy, to all of you. And um, as you see on this first slide, it's a, it's a big team behind the project. And it's uh, being led by two work groups from two universities. The way um, we, we got together is actually that uh, Eduardo from the University of Sydney and me, we studied together in, um, in London many years ago. And ever since uh, we are friends and <laughs> I also really like to, to visit Australia also with students. You have some great architecture and um, great people. So yeah, we're always happy to come. And um, that's how we got to do this project together. Um, and the inspiration for, for what we wanted to do together as a workshop project for a um, one week intensive uh, class with students was inspired by um, buildings like this. This is the Multihalle Mannheim, um, a timber building by Frei Otto. And um, if, if you don't know much about Frei Otto, he was basically spending his entire career to lightweight structures. He was really, um, trying to show that uh, with the right form, you can build extremely efficient uh, structures. So the, you need very little material. And I think it's a very up-to-date topic to really try and, and use geometry and, and save material by just designing clever structures. And um, the way he did this, it was uh, just very um, advanced models that he was building physical processes um, which was just amazing i mean there are lots of um, books out there uh, where you can read about this it was not computers but um i i got to talk to him actually and he he was absolutely uh, amazed by the possibilities we have now doing this with computers and you can imagine that uh, it's a lot less work while these models they took um, just to get a uh, form experiment months maybe um, you can now do this uh, with software such as what you can see here very quickly and you can um, explore shape possibilities um, with very little effort on your computer so yeah, that was basically the, the idea behind the project and uh, the space where we got to, to do this little experiment, uh, which we really wanted to, to realize and to materialize. It was uh, this balcony on the Wilkinson building at the University of Sydney. And um, the machine that we had to produce it was this KUKA robot, which is uh, the digital modeling laboratory of the University of Sydney. And uh, yeah, this was basically the, the setting for the project. So the, the idea, as already said, it was to design one of these uh, form optimized structures on this balcony. We were thinking a little bit about how to connect it to the balustrade and, and to the building. And um, then a highly interesting part of the building was uh, the mathematical and geometrical part, because I think that's really where um, we, we can use the computer much more for, for what it can do. And that's basically 
optimization calculations. So the picture that you see here is the pattern of our structure. And this pattern, it's, it's not in, in any way designed by us. It is just following the principle of using flat material, which is very cheap because we had cost constraints, obviously. And um, making this efficient curved shape where the forces are directed very nicely in, in a shell. It's, uh, of course, not so easy to make it with flat panels. And what you see here is actually the only possibility to, to do it. So all the details are perfectly tight. Um, if you try to draw this, you will realize that as soon as you give it a thickness, if, if this has no thickness, then you can do it basically with quads, with triangles. But the moment you actually want to, to give it a material thickness, such as things have it in, in the real world, you have this um, only one solution, which is hexagons. And, and when they move from one curvature into the other, then you will see this, uh, this interesting shape where they um, go from these star shapes, bow tie shapes, into the hexagons, which are just uh, convex hexagons, or convex polygons. But so much for the geometry part, which is quite interesting, and there's a lot of research uh, from different fields of um, science on, on such patterns and, and geometry. But in architecture, we also um, we need to we need to put things together, and that's where we also said um, we we want to stick with the material of wood. And uh, you can see here the students experimenting with um, wedge-shaped connectors. So that's again a very old trick where you can use um, a slightly angular element, which is going to be hammered in basically, and um, then it's. Um, pulling the, the boxes together. So we make a modular structure. And then these modules, when you put them together on site, you don't have that super precision. You need to make sure that they're going to be actually pulled in place. And um, yeah, one way of doing that is with hardwood wedges, in this case. Again, and the computer can, can calculate all of this nicely with an algorithm. So you have the placement for every connector. And the connectors are always the same, so they can be just basically mass produced. And then the next challenge was um, the gluing, where actually we need to. This is going a little bit slow, sorry. But um, I think you, you can see that we use these um, positioning uh, uh, guides, aids, um, which are produced by Lamello. And they make sure that we can glue the sides, which are not orthogonal, they have a slight angle. And so they are much more difficult to glue. And uh, for that gluing process, we need to keep them in place. And uh, these connectors, which we mill in with little grooves, they were helping a lot with them. So, and yeah, in this video, you can see the, the first prototypes that we fabricated. That was actually done on, on our side here in, in Germany before we left with our students. And um, at the same time, um, experiments were being done in Sydney. So we were working in parallel before we came together and um, built the project. But here you can see some of the first prototypes. We needed to test basically if we can assemble everything without um, any gaps, because the structure has no gaps and we're producing in, in absolute precision. But as you see, this, this worked. The first prototype showed that we can produce these elements highly precisely, and uh, we have no problems with the assembly. Requires very good calibration of the machine, though. We had to um, you know, calibrate the machines a couple of times. And here you see the, the robot uh, at the University of Sydney. We were basically using the same software, which is self-programmed um, software, to, to cut the parts. And yeah, um, you can even download most of the software for free. If anybody's interested, then just uh, send me an email. Here you see, um, once we finally arrived in, in Sydney, the, the production of the elements. So all the sides were already cut. You see the connectors are already inserted. And uh, here you see the connectors being produced. We made this little jig. And um, then there was some glue applied. And this is the the assembly of the boxes, um, where we actually only had um, 
one week, so it was very tight schedule to put this together. And um, I, I think it was a nice challenge because that's really also the challenge in, in real projects, right? We need to be very efficient, we need to be fast on site. So I think it was a very nice experience. I hope you can now all see the video, sometimes explaining best. Uh, Sorry if that was a little choppy, it was a little choppy on my screen, but if you want to see the video in, in very good quality, you can just go to YouTube um, and, and see it there. I think Kate already was so nice and posted a link on the LinkedIn uh, announcement uh, of this webinar. So yes, here you can see some pictures and what, what we all really like about it in the end is that we did this completely with wood and even the connectors are wood and, and therefore they can, I think, be also shown quite quite openly in the structure, don't need to be hidden. It is of course an experiment and um, to, to put this into larger structures, I think there's a couple of things we have to do. But as, as universities we can, um, I think, just, just do these little structures and get um, some fresh ideas maybe out there and um, give some inspiration to others to follow up and um, put this into larger buildings. So, yes, you see another detail of the connectors close up. But yeah, really the most important thing in this project, <laughs> it was the team behind it. And we had a fantastic fun really putting this together. Um, I got great feedback from all of the students and it was a fantastic international experience for the students from Germany and Australia coming together. Uh, great time, we had a great time and we would have been back 2020 <laughs> um, if it weren't for COVID, but we're coming back next year. We already have some, some fantastic plans for another exchange since this was such a success. So, yes. Thanks for listening. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Christopher. We really enjoyed that. Now, um, confirm if I'm getting this right. The amazing thing, this was all put together within a week. Did I read that correct? Due to the workshop. Correct, yeah. Um, yeah, no, amazing. Um, just shows you what team and collaboration can do. Um, and this will actually lead into our next project, which is, again, completely on a different spectrum. So if you were going from something um, that's very uh, future-like um, and a head of innovation, it takes a week to put together, we go back to the old, um, old skills and techniques. And this particular project, um, I'll share, sorry, um, the title so we can see it. Um, this particular project took, is it eight months or nine months, Tony? Uh, on site, about nine months, yeah. So, Chris, one week sounds fantastic. Uh, we couldn't do that. <laughs> we can do it together. Yes, maybe. 
maybe you can swap notes um, towards the end. Um, so yes, just mentioned that so some of these parts are very much exclusive behind the scenes pictures and photos. So if you're watching in replay, um, this part will be missing, but you're welcome to get in touch with Tony. We'll have all the contact details and he can take you through personally. So he will tell us the amazing story behind this um, amazing staircase. Uh, as I mentioned, that took a lot of, um, I think, eight people you had full time on site. Um, and Tony is coming from Norman R. Wright and Sons, who are uh, custom designers and builders of commercial and pleasure boats. And they've been um, doing this for over 110 years. So really looking forward to Tony's presentation. Thanks, Kay. Um, and thanks for inviting uh, you and yourself and, and, uh, and Skull Form for uh, inviting me to share this, this project. It's, been, uh, it's great to get the opportunity and um, I'm sorry, sorry we can't uh, get it recorded, but um, we'll see how we go in the future. Um, I've got my presentation up there. Can you see that, Kate? Yep, that's come yeah. through. You're on. Okay, good. Well, I'll just jump straight into it. So um, Norman Wright and Sons, um, yes, we've been designing and building custom boats for quite a while now. And that montage there just gives you a bit of an idea of the sort of vessels we've been building over the years, commercial and government boats and luxury private cru cruises, etc. Uh, and after 110 years or during 110 years, obviously a lot of that was in timber and uh, we were building timber boats uh, right up until about 1995 or even a bit later. Um, this is one of our original uh, sheds uh, up on the, uh, or yards, boat yards up on the uh, Brisbane River um, and near Newstead House, uh, near Breakfast Creek. And we've been uh, over the years moving further and further down the river as Brisbane gets gentrified and we're now down uh, under the Gateway Bridge if you know of Brisbane at all uh, in the new facility down there. Um, so we are a family company, third generation, Bill and Ian Wright are still heavily involved in the company. Have I got time, Kate, just to quickly show the video? Uh, we might be just getting out of time a That's little bit. Porsches, um, we want to get through all the presentations. I know you've got a lot of questions there that people want to know, so um, that will keep you busy for a little while. And look, we will be passing on contacts for all of our presenters. We know that they've got a lot of valuable information. It's hard to cover all of it, um, but this is an introduction and, and they're more than happy to take conversation offline. Sure, sure. Um, just also, um, Yes, the questions tabs are going off, so if you can have a look in there if you've presented. I uh, just also want to remind um, for people watching the polls tab, I know some of you started filling that out, we're getting some great information there. And so we've got our final presenter, so I'll just pull up his introduction there. So we'll be going to Chadston Link. So that will be presented by Adam Shears, who's the director for Tech Australia, um, who is the Australian partner for Rubner, and that is the leading company in Italy and Europe in the construction of timber buildings and large glue limb and CL2 structures. So just a brief introduction for the link. Um, it's a breathtaking walkway, uh, pedestrian walkway that connects the Melbourne upscale Chatston Shopping Centre with Tower One Office Building and the Hotel Chatston and the M Gallery by Sofitel. Um, I will pass you on to Adam. I know he's got some fantastic material to share. Thanks, Kate. I hope everybody can hear me. Um, Christopher and Tony, fantastic presentations. Um, it was really good to uh, to uh, listen to other people in the timber industry. Um, what I got out of those presentations, and I think our, uh, our own as well, is the precise precision involved in timber. Uh, around the world, especially in Australia for us at the moment. Um, I think it's quite exciting times. It's uh, it's a step up uh, from traditional building and I think there's a lot more to come um, in our way in the, in the timber industry. Um, yeah, look, today I will present uh, a video shortly just on Chadston Shopping Centre. So I will cheat a little bit because a lot of it will be three and a half minutes of the video. But look, we've been involved with Maricopa Library, um, Stromlo Aquatic Centre and quite a few other interesting projects. So for us, ourselves, Ticker and Rubner, we're in a bit of a, we feel we're in a, a niche market of um, bespoke type buildings. So without ado, I'll, um, I'll share um, a video. Hi, 
Hiya, I'm Adam Shears from Tekka Australia. We represent Rubna Holzbauer Engineered Timber Buildings in Australia. We're standing here today at Chadson Shopping Centre under the new covered walkway. This covered walkway links the vicinity centre's roof to the new Sovitel Hotel. This roof provides covered outdoor area for shoppers and patrons to walk from the new hotel to the shopping centre itself. This project was originally conceived and designed by Make Architecture. The link walkway, as you can see, has quite a complex geometrical design. Each set of curves you see is timber glue lamp sections. There's 15 double cross sections here that took Rubner engineers 600 man hours to conceive and design and engineer. The PTFE layer that you see on the roof here provides uh, a weather protection, not just from the sun, from the rain as well, which provides a very nice dry area to walk through for people on their journey to the shopping centre. The timber itself, the glue lamp, has a very nice white finish on it. There was quite a few ideas that were put forward for this project, one of them being glue lamp and larch, which is the species we've chosen for this project, we could have actually left the timber raw without any finish. However, it would have had the natural graying effect. And for this project, the architects and owners of this building wanted to have that white look. Part of the scope of works from vicinity centres, Make Architecture and Hickory Group, is to create and make a mock-up a real life model of the timber itself. This allowed the team to actually have a look at the connection detail at the base. They were able to visually see where the bolts go through the timber, how the plugs would actually be pushed into the timber and how visually it would look afterwards. Prefabricated is the way to go. Most projects I work on or get involved with in Australia Every builder says, how much is your connections? How much is your timber? Try and work out the costings to save money. At the end of the day, does it save money? No, it doesn't. This gives a seamless flow from manufacturing to container delivery, to craning it and installing it. Tekka Australia and Rudner Holzbau, we don't just supply timber, we supply prefabricated buildings that bolt together. Important for Australians to understand and builders, this will save you time and money. It saves defects, saves damage. This is only the start of the capabilities of what will be built in the future in Australia. I'd like to thank the vicinity centres, Hickory Builders for such a superb project. And of course, Rubner Holzbauer and Tekka Australia. Thank you. Thank you for uh, watching that. Um, what I'll do now is I'll just do, do a bit of an overview of, uh, of the history of this project of Chadston Shopping Centre. Um, this will just sort of outline a, a little bit of what I've uh, discussed within the video itself. As you already know, it's a Rubner Holzbauer from Bressanone uh, did the manufacturing and we organised uh, complete procurement with Hickory Group um, in Australia for, uh, for this project. Um, it has a little bit of an interesting history that I'd like to discuss um, for this project. We started looking at this project, um, uh, Vicinity Centre, who is the owner and developer of Chadston. Um, they did some extensive research to establish the, uh, the best specialist um, uh, um, company to provide this full structural design and engineering and shop drawings for this job in June of uh, 2018. Um, we were involved with this and um, heavily involved, I should say. In August, uh, Vicinity Centres nominated us as the preferred glue land contractor for the link. And they made it clear that the attention was for procurement was for uh, a project through DNC contract with a tier one uh, contractor. Hickory Group ended up uh, winning this um, in uh, October 2018. 
and um, due to uh, an extensive tender phase. 2018, in December, Hickory Group informed their intention to proceed with an alternative supply with approval of the Synity Centre. So they actually weren't going to go with us initially for this project. They'd actually, they'd actually work with a New Zealand company um, to do Chadston Shopping Centre. We're a little bit disappointed, but you know we figured it always comes down to cost. Um, January 2019, which you can see here, we had a post-tender interview with them to find the pros and cons and really to sort of reiterate on, on um, well, how we lost the project, I should say. What was actually put forward to us was that during the, um, uh, that process, we're actually, Ruben and Tech are actually gave the clearest and um, not so much the best price, but they actually uh, we gave a clear and precise uh, details of what we were supplying. So we weren't so disappointed with it um, at that stage. Um, February 2019, um, well, I should say, um, yeah, February 2019, it was a dramatic week full of uh, phone calls and such forth. Hickory Group uh, came back to us and said that, look, they would like to get us on board, um, the company they'd chosen for whatever reason, couldn't do um, the job. Uh, we honoured our uh, original costs and we moved forward and um, got this project. So from the start, the design phase, um, really the design phase is our, our passion for, uh, for timber. So myself, I'm actually a carpenter by trade and builder. So I love, I love timber, that's for sure. So for this initial design um, stage, we had to come up with a, uh, a concept um, with, this, with the structural engineering for the link, which is what we managed to do very early on. Let's move forward to the next one. So make a, um, with the green vision, make architecture were requested to give a new look to this main entrance, as you know. So we had to come up and help them work with this seamless transition uh, to look have this timber transition from the hotel to the Chadston Shopping Centre itself. They wanted uh, an eco-sustainable approach, which benefits the environment and gives a really nice aesthetic feature to it. Making the, teach, uh, the, uh, the timber was as a feature was highly paramount. So as you can see with the video I just showed you before, we actually had um, 15 double arches with this um, project. Each uh, column itself was around about 850 by 250 mil in thickness and the weights of them were generally different but they were around um, between three and five ton um, each each section up to eight ton um, each each of those columns bolted together the species that were chosen uh, was larch now i think larch itself to our knowledge anyway um, structurally um, engineering in australia has never really had a project certified with a larch before as an exposed structure, okay, uh, where weather will have will, will go on to the timber, um, water and rain. Generally, what we use in Australia is a treated, like a treated pine type treatment. So larch is a little bit different because we actually don't have to treat it at all. With this project, we did treat it. We actually put a finish on the uh, project itself. Um, but um, that was purely as for an aesthetics um, look, at, look at it. So large itself is is what you can see with use for a, a tower called the Pyramid Chondral um, in Austria. And this is a 110 metre tower, which is all large with no finish on it. So as far as a weathering timber, it is perfect. We know with large it won't rot. As long as we design it properly to make sure that um, we can get the weather off it and the water can run off it, it will last a very, very long time. Prefabrication, and I apologise, I haven't put the CNC um, picture in here. Uh, the prefabrication, I'm running out of time, I know. Um, prefabrication itself is the main part of what we do. It's 100% prefabricated timber. It's done with precision. It guarantees mil a millimetre precision, so it reduces preparation and assembly um, on, on site, basically. We also supply 3D modelling, which we did for Chadson. The structure 
uh, is virtually built before it's actually manufactured. So we can flip it, turn it, we can look at all the connection details and such forth. And in doing so, um, this alleviates any um, issues with the timber not fitting when it comes to site. Um, we, for this project, we supplied a complete mock-up for every group, uh, make architecture to actually go to um, Italy and actually have a look at how the connection details were to look. I could see, touch the actual material itself and actually give them a really good idea and understanding of how it was going to look on site. Because from a 3D model, it looks great, but there's nothing like touching and feeling um, the product itself. Um, the other thing that's very, very important is, and especially when it comes to pricing, transport, because obviously we have to, we have to uh, ship it out here. So we have to design the transport to suit the project. So whether they're curves or straight bars or brackets componentry, we need to minimise wastage within the actual container itself, which is what we do. And this way we can make it more cost effective um, for the builder and the client. But at the same time, we minimise any damage that may uh, occur during shipping. So we have to design that as well. Um, in finishing up in the installation sequence, um, that is something we get heavily involved with. And once again, that's part of our 3D modelling as well. We have to be able to give in be able to give the methodology of how it goes together. We can't just supply the timber to the 3D modelling. We have to be involved. Um, Hickory Group themselves did a fantastic job of installation, but they, um, they didn't need too much assistance at all from us. But we do offer that, like for our Stromlo um, uh, Aquatic Centre, we actually brought somebody out from Europe to help with the installation. How am I going for time, Kate? I think I'm just about out, am I? Hello. So I forgot I was on mute there. Uh, you are getting close, but uh, go ahead, let, let us no, know. No, that's okay. Ends. I was just saying, um, yeah, look, for Stromlo Aquatic Centre, we brought somebody out for um, to help with the installation, but we didn't need to with this one here because um, the builders had had it pretty much in hand with some good, uh, good installers. But that 3D modelling we give and the methodology is so important because we don't want to just give a box of parts for somebody to try and figure out to build. So we have to work in conjunction with the builders, engineers, obviously the architects and the installers to make sure it goes together. Being in Australia ourselves, and especially myself, um, we're available any time um, to go on site and try and problem solve any issues we may have. But we do find, to be perfectly honest, and with our upcoming projects that are even more complicated than Chadston, so far to date, things are looking very good. As, one, as long as we do the 3D modelling and we uh, sign off on our shop drawings, um, it's made to, as I said at the very opening of the um, presentation, it's millimetre perfection. Thank you very much. That finishes me up. Thank you, Adam. And I know um, you have been, everyone has been very busy answering questions and they're very specific. Um, now, we will pass on the presenter's details, so if you'd like to have more detailed conversation, there will certainly be opportunity there. Um, what I'd actually like to do is put the same question to um, all of the presenters, which is to get an idea on um, what are you working on next, what are your projects coming up. I know some of them you might not be able to discuss, so that's fine, but if you do have something that's coming up in the future, if you can share with us, that would be great. And if we just go back in the same order, that was started, uh, so we're not all fighting for the spot. So I'll direct it to uh, to Christopher. Yes, thank you very much, and fantastic presentations also from uh, Tony and Adam. Amazing projects. So if we're working on a couple of things, but uh, one thing that I'm really passionate about is is using this digital technology to to be more efficient about materials and. Um, one project that we actually want to do, we wanted to do this year in Brisbane and now we're planning to do next year is with um, working with weak wood and, and round wood elements and uh, to show how we can actually use such wood which is currently not used much in buildings through digital technology and make some um, nice structures. <laughs> Amazing. Tony, for something completely different as well. <laughs> but 
<laughs> the boat, then, yeah. you know, maybe what do you do next in architecture? Yeah, so we've got four new boats on the way, which is mainly commercial boats. But um, And architecture, yeah, it's interesting. The, this, this whole uh, project has opened our eyes to the opportunities in the uh, interior spaces. And um, obviously the, the laths and the, the timber strapping and whatnot is a, is a bit of flavour of the um, month or year or, or decade and uh, we're certainly fielding a lot of inquiries about that type of work and then we're in the process of uh, quoting on some similar work. Um, we've done a lot of land-based stuff before um, but we see this uh, area as, as a bit of a growth area or a bit of an extra string to our bow and keeps our timber skills uh, finely honed which is great. Excellent and Adam what's, what's coming up next for you? Yeah, thanks, Kate. Um, look, yeah, we're quite excited. We've uh, we've got a project coming up, which uh, we've uh, we're already in the design stage and uh, almost manufacturing, to be honest. And it's actually called uh, Granville Stadium. It's a project from DWP Architects, uh, North Rock of the Engineers, and Belmont are, are um, builders are building it. So Granville Stadium will be the first um, timber stadium in Australia, I believe. And it's a 700-seat stadium, tiered stadium with a big cantilever, cantilever roof. Uh, we've done work on the design from basically from the base, from the columns up, and supplying the complete um, roof prefabricated. So that will actually be delivered uh, to site in Granville um, around about uh, early to, to mid December this year, um, and hopefully that will be the timber work will be completed by February. 2021. Um, so yeah, we're really looking forward to that. Uh, we find that the sports precinct from aquatic centres, stadiums and, and, and walkways and things is really our niche in, in the industry. Excellent. Well, thank you so much, gentlemen. We really enjoy the presentation. I think um, it's been very informative for everyone. I'm just having a quick look in the poll section. So um, we asked what brought people to this event. And the majority, I think 84% said, I want to learn new things. So um, I'm sure they've all picked up some good tips from that. Um, so we'll draw out um, a lucky winner to send out a lovely bottle of champagne to enjoy uh, at their own leisure. Now, there's no logic to it. So you do have to be online. So uh, please pay attention. If you've asked questions, that's where we are picking the winner from. So I've got one very active participant in Eve Edwards. So please yell out, uh, just say hi in the chat if you're here, Eve. And just to let you know what happened last is, uh, oh, there you go, Eve's here, great. So we've got a winner. So watch out for an email from me, I'll grab your details and we'll get that organised and send out to you. Um, as I said, we will do a follow-up um, email so you'll get all the contacts if you want to get more information. And just also show you some contact points if you want to get in touch with us. Uh, please do so. Obviously, with Scalp Form, um, we've got the main number. But um, also the contact for the studio, if you are in Melbourne and you want to come and have a look um, at our design studio when that is open, uh, Blake Proud is our studio manager, so his details are on the screen. And get in touch with myself if you'd like to host an event like this or if you just want to let us know what you would like to see from us. We certainly would like to do more of these get-togethers, so hopefully you have enjoyed. And um, we are right on time at 4 o'clock which is great. So you will get a recording on this to go over the details and thank you all for joining us. It's been a real pleasure and joy. Um, thank you to all the presenters for doing such a great job. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, 